My name is Gianfranco Cecconi. I work on the uh, European Union Support Centre for Data Sharing. It's a new project uh, run by the European Union to promote data sharing in Europe in business organisations and, and governments. And I'm here today in Helsinki recording an interview uh, with uh, uh, one old friend of mine, Antti Poikola, and a new friend of mine. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, please. Okay, uh, yes, I'm Antti Poikola, called Yogi, uh, working for the Technology Industries Finland, which is an uh, uh, industry association representing um, roughly 1,600 Finnish uh, tech companies, small and big. And uh, I'm here in the digitalization team, uh, mostly trying to uh, help data sharing among uh, companies in Finland. So whatever it needs on the business side, on the legal side and on the technical side to get them onto the bandwagon of uh, data economy and not, not to leave behind our good companies. And my colleague. Yes, my uh, name is Jussi Mäkinen. I'm a digital lawyer or lawyer. I'm specialized in digital issues, namely uh, data protection and uh, data sharing. And uh, I think that it might have been my idea to start with the or initiate the pro project on having model legal terms for sharing of industrial data. How long ago was that? Yeah, we this, uh, initiated this project in early 2019. So it took us roughly half year, half a year to develop these model terms and uh, and the way and why we did that this was the uh, notion that data is being shared. We knew that data is being shared. There are technical solutions that exist. There are technical peoples that are growing familiar with the idea and they, they start and they are starting to identify data sets within the companies that can be shared with other partners, not to anyone perhaps, but with, with trusted partners. And, uh, and we knew that there are already be, there is already business interest, so there might be some value for on, on that that data may carry some kind of value. And, and it's and we've heard that it's being negotiated in, in legal negotiations or, or when all kinds of contracts are made between companies. But then we realized that the existing models on or clauses that usually exist in those contracts, you usually have NDAs, uh, clauses over NDAs, you usually have clauses over IPRs, and those are not ideal for agreeing on use of data, since uh, they are either too restrictive, as in NDA is the case in NDAs, uh, or then they are based on ownership and uh, and more importantly on the concept of exclusivity, as is the case in in IPR clauses. So therefore, we uh, we saw that and we asked around whether there are any established models on how to agree over data usage. And we found none. And, uh, and therefore we initiated this project. It might be worthwhile to have something that because the uh, parties, so if the case is that the parties have blank page, it's very challenging for the legal functions of, of a company. Usually they are very thinly resources, resourced and they have huge workload. So if they are going to have to face something new that doesn't carry that much of our uh, economical value, so then you don't, you're not, in a typical case, you are not allowed or you're not in, the, uh, in such luxury that you could devote your time to develop some kind of a, a contract. So usually then the answer from the legal department is no. No, uh, in fact, we always wonder how many opportunities are lost simply because the break-even point is too high to yes. start, particularly for small and medium enterprises. If the cost of the lawyers to write those contracts from scratch, if the, say, even just as a matter of risk mitigation, you need to yes. save some money for being sued because you're not really certain what could happen yes. there for your liability and so on, couldn't those two factors alone kill an opportunity from the start and say, yes. you know what, I'll pass, I, 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 won't, yes. date. I won't share that. Yes, and that's the... Uh, we, we found the very same problem. And, uh, 
and therefore we initiated this project and the idea was not perhaps to fill the void up to the extent of 100%, but we figured that if we could fill this blank page to the uh, extent of some, somewhere between 50 and 70%, that would greatly help these companies and, and guide the companies to have um, reasonable discussion and, and find out and, and attain a uh, reasonable and, uh, and profit uh, and working solution for data sharing. So, and there we, um, we started, and that's how we got on with this project. And then we organized, uh, the, with the great help of Antti, a set of um, workshops where we uh, discussed this case through, uh, or this issue through various cases. And then first the idea was to have perhaps two or three different sets with some uh, uh, shared shared clauses uh, that, that would be kind of a standard issue thing. But then we, at the very end, we ended up for, uh, ended up in having just one set okay. of model clauses. Yeah, so we started by thinking that maybe there are different cases if there are two companies that are more or less equals and decide to do collaboration. Uh, that might be one case or other case where one is, uh, the, the lead company and is subcontracting somebody uh, and maybe there would be different kind of cases. So that was the starting point. But I think it's good that we ended up merging the ideas from these different streams into one. So you problem. found ways to describe yes. these different cases also yes. with, a, with a consistent language. Yes. Something we are wondering also exploring other cases like yes. yours and, and other companies doing data sharing is that do we really have a shared and agreed uh, terminology for what we're doing, yes. that taxonomy that we all agree on. Uh, the fact itself that you have managed to converge two models yes. shows that you must have spent substantial time trying to make yes. the, 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 that language work for both, right? Yes, and we, are, we play with rather general terms. And then one of the solutions that make this possible is that we didn't try to define the data to, uh, um, in a too strict manner. So it, it is left quite open it, uh, and, and the idea was that we discussed this a lot. And, uh, and just as Antti mentioned, various use cases, whether you have your piece of gadgetry or piece of machine in someone else's factory and connect it to that someone else's or your customers' uh, you know, um, data systems and so forth. And then you need to agree on how to First, you need to define that I need to have access to this set of data. And can we agree that in all circumstances, we have access to, through your systems to this data? And, and so, and we figured that the, uh, that the parties are best placed to kind of pinpoint the data that they want to, to be shared. And, and there is no silver bullet for that. And we have tried to uh, give kind of a, the very general model if it's already happening, then they can just use that general, the companies can use, for example, that very general wording that is there. Or then at the other end, you do, for example, an Excel sheet where you pinpoint the kind of a machines or parts of machines and sensors that the data that is derived from this, this, and this sensor. And the, these are the kind of a two opposite ends of that of the very data. wide track. And, and it's very challenging and I think that's the kind of a, one of the key issues that the uh, parties must spend time on to find the solution. And first, you need to uh, and the and the parties need to do their homework as well, because first they need to define what what can they share, what are they willing to share, and on perhaps on which conditions. So you have uh, dealt with you develop your research, uh, trying to address those two models. Yeah. Did you also have one industry specific in mind? Did you want to be industry agnostic to some degree? What was the original we, idea? The idea was to kind of uh, hand the case, real life cases in order to make them workable, but then use language that would be industry agnostic. And I think that, that the term, actual terms that are now published are rather in, industry agnostic. And, and we also had since we have a con a technical consulting companies in our membership, the you know, a third model was from the consulting where there is, uh, and I think that that's the most challenging areas 
because there are already quite established models on how to use e that on IPRs on information that is being exchanged between part between the customer and the consultant and, and so and and yes and so we have but then the idea is to offer kind of a rather general models and, and a couple of options in 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 uh, for example data specifications and on data uh, on how to specify data and uh, and on data uses as well okay uh, so yes. what is the output of your work so far what what, what, um, what is the status of the project from an external point of view so I imagine i i know i imagine yeah. you finish and i came to your website what could i use of your work so far i think that it's rather because they are so general and i think that they should be uh and they are published in in finnish and in english okay language. so they they can form the basis in pretty many for agreeing over data usage in various areas of uh, industry and uh, and the idea is that the uh, that they are applied as a as an addendum to an existing agreement so first you already have in the ideal case you already have a working uh, agreement or agreement sort. and you have for example established supply contract and, and supply relation and you and there's all, already uh, an existing value chain and then you add this uh, these terms to that main agreement okay well, and this is an interesting yes, choice as well yes. so you don't want to force um, the organizations who want to try these these new yes. terms to perhaps rewrite their own existing contract from scratch. This is yes. intended to be an addendum you can add to yes. your yes. existing relationship yes. with another company. And right now we are uh, doing the promotion of existing these yes. terms. I mean, it, it requires a certain amount of uh, uh, new kinds of thinking that what is actually possible. So uh, we are doing the uh, legwork to go to the companies uh, during this semester now uh, until Christmas to, to really promote that this is possible. Uh, take it if you have some uh, contract negotiations ongoing or upcoming mm -hmm. soon, uh, consider trying this out and, and based on the feedback what we get, um, we are prepared to uh, maybe do the second version of, uh, of this if there is uh, somebody says that, okay, we tried it and this work, uh, worked perfectly, but there is something need to be here. So yeah. kind of make it, uh, making, uh, making it uh, better by, by the use. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, you see, do you have a, a idea who might be the first ones, or uh, how, how, them, how yeah. is it going? Uh, I think that the um, yes, it's kind of a uh, very important. I think and uh, to have the kind of a living network around these clauses so that they stay alive and and are, are worthwhile. But the um, right now we are uh, launched them these uh, terms in it was in September mid September. So it's kind of our, now we, we are trying to see, we, I haven't had any figures yet, but, but there has been interest and I th there has been sales and they are available for everyone at, for the price of 130 euros from our, uh, our web shop. And, uh, and they also sell in our web shop, there, there's lots of different clauses available. For example, Orgolim clauses and Scandinavian Nordic clauses for, uh, all kinds of supplies of uh, heavy pieces of machinery and, and uh, services as well. And, uh, but the idea how this should work is that the um, first, as we mentioned, the, uh, you have the existing cooperation and an agreement constituting that agree, uh, cooperation. And, uh, and then the parties define the data that is to be shared. And then the parties uh, so these terms guide parties to define the data, they guide parties to define the access point and agree over the access point, perhaps make a, um, make a, a technical addendum where it's defined and where information security and things like that are, are being agreed over. And then the data starts flowing in. And then the usage right is that these uh, terms provide is very wide so the we heard first discussions about 
internal and external activity of the company. But then we decided to ditch that language. And then we only, there the um, section is called use of data. And, and it provides very wide usage right for that data, even going so far that you can actually use this data and, and base, for example, some of the uh, one of one some of the forms of IP rights, for example, on that data. So you can go that far. So it's something very different from a an existing the the practice how for, uh, or the language that is used in NDAs. Uh, so that are very restrictive. And the idea is that you can bring in third parties if they are um, covered by same same rules as the original uh, contracting party. And so you can bring in, for example, an AI company to see what they find out or data an analyst companies to see what they find out of so that So you data. can plug in yes. as a third party into the yes. pre-existing yes. agreement. Yes, but then if you want to, but in, and in order to uh, guarantee trust, but if you want to publish or then give that data to a third party, then you must anonymize that data. And that is the kind of a solution. We discussed this very much, that how, what to do in these kind of cases. And then we found the solution of anonymization. That, and then they are also these terms provide a solution if the, uh, if the other party, if the original uh, contracting party is not sure whether the anonymization is of uh, high enough quality. And so, so then he, he can ask for a sample that where whereby he can validate, validate whether the uh, anonymization yeah. is kind of good enough and 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 that is the kind of a uh, so why do you should try within the uh, uh, within the existing uh, um, contracting parties so both have access to data both have uh, very wide usage right that is not dependent on other part other party anymore so the it places pretty much of the burden on on how to define the data. Yeah. There's, there's one point perhaps close to this that we discussed before we started recording, yeah. that is the right to learn, I believe you call it. Yes. Can, can you tell me more about this? Yeah, and it's a kind of a, uh, it's in there and uh, because uh, it's contained in the, uh, in the usage right since, and I think, the, I'm not sure if it's, I think we actually, we might have excluded it from the actual terms, but it's in the introduction now that we, because uh, there are, there is lots of this discussion in the European Union at the moment, in the legislation side, uh, whether it's the kind of a general right to learn from, from your experience. And, and, and since the usage right is so wide, then you can use it unless you, uh, you, you can also use that. Uh, and, and the, uh, uh, the experience you gain from that is kind of a derived from that data, and uh, and that is the kind of um, since we see saw that the uh, that's the only way f for the data to be valuable is to have um, uh, kind of freestanding usage right to the data that is accrued on basis on on this agreement in a way to retain the learning yes. even when yes. the rights on the original data perhaps are expiring. Yes, yes, yes. And the, uh, and the companies are, were actually rather willing. They saw it, didn't see it as problematic. Okay. That they are, for example, that their subcontractors are able to learn from their data and, and at the very end perhaps raise their kind of a levels to, and, and give them the uh, uh, mm, uh, possibility to learn from that data and in turn have better products and then they can offer those better products also to their to that, uh, contracting parties competitors and the kind of a red line was not was there that they didn't naturally want their data in an in, uh, identifiable form yeah to end up on their competitors because that would be very pro problematic yeah, also in the in terms of competition law. Yeah. And there our solution is to kind of uh, offer this uh, anonymization, anonymization technique. Uh, I find it 
quite fascinating how the right to, to learn and describe yeah. in a way challenges a lot of our thinking traditionally. I mean, yes. Even in the space of open data, we're used to the idea that if, deri if we derive the data set from another, you keep a line to the license of the origin if you want to be fair, of course, to, yes. to the original issue. Yes. But learning is such a more um, almost metaphysical thing, right? So, yes. um, and perhaps with AI, with algorithms, it becomes much more uh, systematic, much more algorithmical. Uh, Yes. Can do you think you said that the companies you talked to in your trials in in your discussions were actually keen to be learned from? Uh, that that is quite fascinating to 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 learn. And perhaps and not keen to be learned <laughs> on, but uh, <laughs> okay, not sorry. reluctant. <laughs> not reluctant. Okay. On on so they didn't see it that problematic. Very good. I and think I think one one typical way uh, of thinking that uh, appears is that everybody wants to know how they are comparing to their peers. Let's yes. say in terms of efficiency of a factory or hospital or whatnot, uh, uh, companies, organization, they, they are keen on understanding how they, they are uh, compared to the wider population. And they understand that in order that to happen, they need to be able to uh, give data for somebody who can learn from that and from others and, and produce this uh, kind of aggregate information, which is kind of the industry-wide learning. So they see that as uh, their uh, upside that, uh, okay, if we uh, provide something to some sort of bigger pool, we also get our uh, comparison and we can learn how we are doing in compared to, to others. What is the uh, uh, tricky part there is, is that uh, Nobody wants that uh, they can be pinpointed there, that, okay, this hospital is working uh, worse than the others. Uh, if that would be the case that uh, somebody could uh, uh, find out from the aggregate information how well or poorly somebody is, is doing, uh, that, that is unacceptable uh, by wide. So I think that there comes the uh, not reluctant because they see also the upside of uh, then being able to, uh, like, uh, widely learned from others through this system, uh, but the uh, red line is exactly that, uh, it should be anonymized so that it is impossible to pinpoint back uh, how well or poorly somebody is doing. Understood. Yes. yes, and actually I just checked, the, it's the kind of, a, I can uh, send you the uh, these terms, and it's uh, 5.1, there's profit, actually it's in the terms, uh, professional skills and experience, uh, and it's exactly, the words, wording used is that these terms shall not limit a party's right to utilize the professional skills and experience gained by the party during the agreement. Okay, that, yeah. that sounds quite a strong statement to me. Yes. So I, I like yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. But on the other hand, is it, I think that the, the lawyers are kind of a pretty much trying to use restrictive language. But at the end of the day, I'd like to ask, is it really possible? Mm. Okay. To kind of uh, see that if, if you have, for example, in a consultant working with various companies, it's actually very hard to pinpoint that this experience is uh, derived yeah, yeah. from this customer and this experience is derived from this customer. And I think that's one of the reasons that we had also these consultants with uh, working in this group, since that's the kind of a modus operandi of a consultant firm. Yes, they a learn from their customers. Kind of model, yes, yeah. yes, in which it's already can, happening yes. for decades. And yes, nobody's saying yes. anything, right? And we don't want to, and there, therefore, it was not even possible for us to start discussing that whether you could actually deny that. It's it's, it's an interesting. Yeah, point. and and again, the point I made earlier. I wonder to what degree when this becomes algorithmic, you yes. will actually need to change your mind about this. I, yeah. I don't have an answer. I'm yeah. just I'm just putting a doubt in you. I'm yes, curious. Yes. And then, you, you took the effort of writing this also in English. Are yes. you, do you have the ambition to go beyond Finland? Uh, well, we Finnish companies, um, many big ones uh, and even smaller ones are having working languages English. So yes. it's so international it's business anyway. Okay. So. Yes. But, but your remit, uh, but your focus is on Finland anyway. Well, our focus is on Finland, but you see is working heavily to uh, get this also to the European agenda. And uh, now we are learning that you are doing exactly <laughs> this. So that's why yes. we are here around this table. Yes. And we are, for example, if, you, if you're aware of the activities of an uh, association called Orgalim, that they produce lots of, I'm taking part in the Orgalim legal group, 
where we de develop these model terms for all various ca industry cases, heavy industry cases. And the uh, working uh, title for, for this is the kind of Oracle in Big Data Guidance. Uh -huh. So perhaps not, not to be called model terms in the Oracle family, but since these are perhaps not mature enough because and the style is somewhat different from like or form. quite completely yeah, and yeah, form yeah. is different. But we can call this guidance and give this kind of a example of terms that can be used. And and that's one of our kind of a avenues to the uh, wider audience is then Finland. Since we feel that these are the language and the uh, there are no Finnish Finland specific uh, provisions in this. So um, nor process. even references to Finnish specific law. I guess, no, this no, point. no. So this could be literally be taken and implemented say, yes, in Sweden. Or, yes, uh, yes. Okay. Um, you named earlier um, fair markets and competition law. Yes. And in the experience I've had talking with uh, companies for start exploring yeah. data sharing, particularly say the less experienced one, sometimes offer as a very first concern exactly that one yes. what if um, I am not smart enough or my lawyers are not engaged enough yeah. to realize that something I'm doing could be called later anti-competitive yeah. behavior yes. is it something you've experienced uh, yes. too in, in talking with your partner yes we discussed this but we actually rely quite heavily on this uh, on this model that the uh, data d will not so that that the kind of anonymization rule is the kind of a balancing factor there. That you have perhaps a supplier network wherein this data can be used, but then when it's, we are not addressing here, and it's not a quite a likely case where two direct competitors would start sharing this data, but the two competitors may use same subcontractors but since the data does not flow through that subcontractor to that direct competitor, the only way, and the kind of a, and then when they actually provide the uh, rather wide usage rights for that subcontractor, so then we are not, tr we, I, I actually think that we found quite a nice working balance here that we are, we are trying to distribute the benefits on a quite on mutually to all ag both agreeing parties and not to tie in too heavily the uh, so for example the subcontractor or the customer mm -hmm. to that by uh, these data data clauses but the, we, I, we you know, they come with the introduction and I, I wrote their rather lengthy piece about the uh, which is based on the commission's uh, report from April this year on competition law in, in, in digital age. And they flash some kind of examples there. But I think that they, we do not, if, if you use these, and it's, all, it's always so that the, it's at the party's risk, or the user takes the responsibility and the risk to apply these model terms in a way, in a way that is compliant with the competition law. Mm -hmm. And and what we have done, we have wrote in the introduction, what might be the implications of the competition law on data sharing. And we have pointed out the case that the, the, if they, for example, if the companies make a pool of data that is needed, actually, that is well, to which access is needed in order to enter the market, then the parties must be ready to license, give that access on friend basis, fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory basis. And that is something that is, can be derived from the case law of the uh, European court. But then if you start sharing data in existing value chains, then you can go, and then if all the parties have rather reasonable uh, rights to use that data and you are not overtly strictly uh, trying to tie in those parties and I and then I think that would, is the way to kind of steer clear of competition law 
what about personal data instead? Because again, in, in, yes. in our experience, we also saw many companies just being concerned of yes. breaking GDPR in some way and using this as a as a major element of friction in evaluating yes. opportunities for data sharing. Um, what was your thinking around it? Do you think you have a good solution also to face those kind of challenges? No, no maybe I can <laughs> answer <laughs> some part on, on this. So. Definitely these model clauses, they are uh, directed to non-personal data uh, and that was a practical uh, decision of uh, limiting the scope a little bit to make something that is actually usable uh, right now. Uh, on, on the side of uh, personal data sharing, um, we are quite active in, in Finland. There are many players uh, supporting the idea of human-centric uh, personal data, <coughs> my data. Uh, for example, uh, Citra has this project called IHAN. And uh, there we have been working on uh, what we call uh, rule book uh, for uh, such entities that govern the data sharing among some uh, groups. So we believe that uh, there will be some sort of uh, maybe not uh, immediately global way of sharing personal data seamlessly and securely, but it will start in some sort of circles where there, it might be an industry specific or it might be, uh, well, for example, City of Helsinki just announced in, in the My Data conference that they are aiming to become a My Data operator in this uh, area of uh, city of Helsinki for the city services uh, so that there would be easy way to share uh, personal data uh, under permission from people. For example, if somebody moves uh, from other city to Helsinki, so some uh, city services can be made mm -hmm. more seamless. So that's being developed uh, in, in the uh, My Data or Data Operator. Uh, framework and uh, they're the key uh, asset that uh, IHAN project is uh, um, promoting is this uh, rule book uh, model. So basically uh, having a way of uh, defining the uh, key business elements, uh, key legal elements and key technical elements uh, in, uh, in the data sharing so that uh, it's actually quite uh, extensive uh, formulation of how in, in certain circles data could be shared, including personal data. Uh, and they are doing this model because these are very different rule book for, uh, let's say, city of Helsinki might be very different from rule book of uh, healthcare sector yeah. somewhere. Or so information security sector. Yeah, information something. security sector. That's, uh, that's another interesting case. So basically these rule books that govern data sharing in some circle uh, are different, but they have same elements. Uh, so, yes. so that's kind of the development uh, on the wider picture that takes uh, also into consideration the liabilities and, and uh, responsibilities in the personal data sharing, which are in a way bigger uh, than in non-personal data area. So uh, maybe of course uh, these competition law things might not apply in so much in the personal data, or maybe they do, so there are differences. Anyways, uh, this uh, model clauses part is kind of a, a tiny practical tool in the much more wider picture yes. of uh, business legal technology interoperability. Yes. They are kind of a much needed first step. And the idea is that we don't exclude the uh, personal data entirely. The, so the idea is that if you want to use this for, uh, so you can use these terms as basis, but then bring in the uh, kind of addendum on on uh, pers personal data and data processing DPA. So you bring in the DPA because the and the reason why the, we didn't want to take you know, two steps at a time is that you can actually have plethora of different models. You ha can have joint controllership. You can have controller processor and so forth. And the models can so then you end up in a maze of different yeah. models. And, and, and then it's, and, and, and then the kind of a value of having model terms diminishes. Because if you're doing a la carte, then you do a la carte. But then you can use this as kind of a, to have the kind of first layer, technical layer, for example, you have the kind of responsibilities and so, and then you add on the uh, specific, uh, personal data specific issues. Now, who is the control, is the, what kind of a, processing situation is this, what kind of uh, data, what kind of risks, what are the basis for processing and, and so forth and so forth. Understood. Yes. 
and, and before I start wrapping up, yeah. may, may I ask you, so what, what happens next? What, 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 is, what are the next few steps in your, in your plan and possibly instead farther in the future? How do you see your work in perspective? Perhaps where will be data sharing as a, in, in, case, in terms of state of maturity a few yes. years from now for you? We actually, there's, uh, there was a study right after we uh, published these terms that half of Finnish companies are actually sharing data. Right. And it was done by ETLA. And, uh, and it was kind of a, uh, well, it was the kind of a message that proved us right <laughs> that there is need for this kind of a tool. And, uh, and, and well, it personally, it made me very happy that I'm, we at least we got something right. And then the, I think that the next step is, is this, is namely this, what uh, Antti just discussed, this data operator model. So these terms are aimed for kind of a traditional two-party agreements. And then when the I idea is that you, and you know that there are networks of companies, either based around one bigger company and you have kind of a network of subcontractors and so forth that are good, the, which, and it would be good that all the subcontracts would have, have some kind of access to same set of data. And I think that the, the way to end up, end in that, uh, so to find, to kind of reach that op objective is to have that in place these kinds of model terms between these various subcontractors and then the same kind and the same line of thinking that, that they all are have readiness to analyze their own data they know what they can share on what conditions and and then when we reach that stage of maturity then enters the uh, data operator thinking so the kind of a, we switch from party to party or inter-party agreements to a network where we have one set of rules that might be called rule book. We have shared technical standards, same, same kind of APIs. And then we have the readiness to pull this data and share this data between various sources and various users and they can have also double functions. So the, all the parties in that data network are data sources and data users. And then they have one set of rules and instead of inter-party uh, inter agreements, they have, they join in, in or adhere into this kind of a data operator net, in a network that someone operates or uses. And then there is kind of somewhat similar set of rules, but instead of model terms, it's called rule book for a data network. And, and I also appreciated uh, Antti saying earlier yeah. that you, you're not taking for granted that what you have produced is the best license possible. You want to hear back, right? What, what yes. channel, and, and that is very important also for us. What channels are you put, making available to, to the people you're working with, the organizations you're working with, and to give back to you, to, to share their feedback? Um, how are you going to work together? Uh, well, we are first, now we are kind of a ro in, in the rollout stage and when we have the uh, uh, information in place that these kinds of terms exist, then the next phase is to kind of the feedback phase where we ask our members that have you taken these, uh, have you implemented, tried to implement these rules, these model terms and just as uh, 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 Antti mentioned that then we ask for, on a structured manner and I think that in let's say in six months time or something like that, somewhere during 2020, we are on a structured model that perhaps close by close that did this work and, and then kind of have a structured feedback. And possibly going for yes, the next version yes, or yes. revision of the work. And then, and then we also need to attain practicing lawyers from, the com from companies and from the uh, legal firms kind of a make this kind of a living organism yeah. so that we are we are ready to produce version two. And I think that then when there are these added technical addendums and then the definition of data, and I think that they go might go branch by branch. So different areas of technology and industry, you might want to, and the kind of a 
the way is to standardize things. And I think that the standardization takes place on a, if, you, if we think about traditional branches, where they use same kind of language and, and have same kind of a, same kinds of machines and so forth. And then you define the access points and then you define the data. And so, and I think that the standardization is the, is the key in, the, in those technical issues. Yeah, I, I wanted to comment on this uh, next level thinking on the network level or data operators. So something that's happening on the European level, they, they speak about uh, pan-European data spaces. Uh, that's a term that's being introduced at least in Digital Europe program and probably in some other policy papers. Uh, and uh, my worry uh, when reading those, uh, based on my history in, in this area, is that very often people start about uh, thinking data sharing in terms of technology. So we need to build something. We need to put this kind of uh, box where people can pour in data and share it among themselves. And I, I think that... Uh, this uh, level of uh, starting to think uh, the legal design of it it's uh, really crucial and it's not uh, not still being perceived as uh, as so urgent as the in, in the Euro side, european yeah. level so i i worry that we will get uh, data uh, spaces which are some sort of uh, eu project eu funded uh, projects of platforms where it's lots of uh, tech uh, builders involved and they will be empty like bong 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 nothing <laughs> happens inside because there misses the piece of uh, of the legal design so we hope to really introduce this legal design thinking in on top of the uh, existing technology thinking yeah. thank you for this and uh, and i think that the uh, because when we de when the commission discusses european data space and, and i i think that they've uh, pinpointed where there's something like five different areas like uh, uh, automotive industry and, and transport and health and agriculture and so forth. And then you kind of uh, take a deep or dive into the deep end of the pool. Because then you enter directly the discussion where you have competitors, direct competitors, and you, you, you initiate a discussion with them. Uh, now you must start sharing your data. And then you get the kind of whole width of competition law issues and then you don't have you have minimum amount of trust between the players and i think that the i have called our model a organic model since there this uh, phenomenon of uh, data sharing has been uh, studied somewhat in finland and the kind of outcome of these studies is that the first thing you need for data sharing to take place is trust between the sharing parties and I think that the, uh, our model is based on that notion, that you take existing cooperation between companies where there is already some amount of, or good amount of trust. It's easiest to start from there. And then the kind of organic way is to start forming networks from the, and, the, and these data pools from these companies. And then, and then by this organic model, it's easier to, for example, to, and uh, we don't offer any solutions for pricing, for example, because we felt that this is something that is best left for these companies. And then during these negotiations on this organi uh, organic model, if someone re really badly wants this data, and I think that's the best sign of the, uh, of the value yeah. of that data. Yeah, yeah. And then there is a kind of a natural way for these parties to agree on price, for example, on the on the access on that data, and and the, and then if you want to talk, kind of bring down or kind of bring down the very wide usage rights to a more specific use, then I think that's the subject of these pricing and control negotiations. But we felt that that's an area we don't need to go into because that's best left for these contracting parties. But I think that the way to organically develop these data spaces is to have the kind of a start from existing networks and then you add the data layer and you actually realize that then the value of these networks is, go I'm quite sure it's going to rise because then they see what, how is my part on this, for example, product performing, what can I do better? 
so that the this, that this product would be better. And I think that the and then they realize that every company when and the product is better, everyone in this network will be doing it. Their business will be doing better. And and this forms a much needed ba kind of a database for circular economy and so forth. So when they, the data provides insight to uh, to all the players in that network that what is my part in this, what it could be, how we, how we could develop this into something bigger and better, how could we use resources more efficiently and so forth. Uh, any last notes or anything you want to close with? I think uh, this is uh, fascinating when when people start thinking in terms of data, but not in terms of technology only, yeah. because that's the level of maturity that we are seeing yeah. now. There is business thinker and legal thinkers also in the data space when there used to be only the engineers. <laughs>